today's video it's all about a crazy idea that I've had I would like to make an induction furnace from the parts from a microwave oven now how hard can that be better get started and we'll find out so it's a Panasonic microwave and look for this part here you need an inverter microwave no other microwave will do the job this is a quick test to see if the microwave oven is working put on maximum power level 30 seconds and press start so what we do open the door now I can feel warm air in there I know that the inverter is working before I take the cover off we've got a warning sign here it says warning microwave energy do not remove the outer cover so if you're not familiar with microwave ovens do not take a cover off and have a look inside now we've got the safety warnings over it says do not open no user serviceable parts inside well there are and I'm going to modify them and the second point is it says to be serviced only by service technician trained by the manufacturer well I'm not trained by the manufacturer but I use a lot of common sense the cover has been taken off this is the part we want that's the inverter go like that and we'll get rid of the high voltage wire here is a good close up look of the inverter and I've wrapped the wire around the primary side of the transformer and it's connected to my meter and what I'd like to know is what frequency does it run at so I'll have to run it So the frequency was about 30 kilohertz or just above it so what it means is that's good for an induction furnace if you want to run a small induction furnace and the frequency is a lot lower than that it won't heat up properly so we're good to go for the next step so I put the inverter back into the microwave oven and put the covers back on again because you never run them without the cooling fan cooling it down otherwise it'll overheat but there's one thing I forgot and there it says danger high voltage yes it is high voltage 5000 volts so don't put your fingers anywhere near inside a microwave oven anyway I've modified the printed circuit board and I've made the wires come out and they come out to the terminals here and that'll connect to a work coil and that'll be the next step and we'll see something heat up we're ready for the big test now what I've done I've wrapped some wires around here so that's the heating coil in there and be able to fill up full of water Here you can see the microwave oven where the wires come out it will dial up some time and switch it on Ooh, it's starting to get hot but that quick see the bubble starting to come off the tin can surface It's 
been one minute. Oh, so it took one minute and 20 seconds to get the water from room temperature to boiling. That was quick. Well, I was really impressed by what this did. It worked really well. But I know someone's going to complain and say, what a pathetic demonstration. And I'll say, I want to see smoke and flames and glowing metal. Well, the problem is, the wire will get too hot and burn out, short it out, so I can't do it. But give me a few minutes and we'll work out another demonstration. Okay, this is what I've come up with. I've cut the top off a glass jar, and as you can see, I've wrapped copper coils around it. And we'll sit the tin inside there, and we'll see what happens. Here comes the smoke and flames test. The tin can has got plenty of glue for the label, but also there's probably a varnish coating to stop the food from eating into the metal. So I'll drop it in here, and I've got a fan blowing the smoke away, and we'll switch her on. Oh, look at that, it's glowing already. I hope that glass doesn't break. Wow, look at that. Did you notice at the end of the last video clip all the smoke coming off the tape? Well this is what happens. It gets very hot. The reason being is because there's a lot of current circulating around that coil but also there's a lot of radiant heat coming off that tin can when it was being heated up. So in the commercial induction furnace they have copper tubing and water's pumped through to cool it down. So I'll show you what I've done. I've made something up. So this is how you stop the copper coil from overheating. You bend a lot of copper tube into a coil like that and pump the water through. And this is the coil for my crucible. So I've dismantled the microwave oven and these are the two parts that I got off it. Is the timer, touchpad and the inverter. And what happens is the power goes through there into a transformer and then into the heating coil. Now what I've done is I've got a separate power supply to run these 12 volt fans. One is the cool inverter and the other one is the cool the transformer. Now I'm having a bit of a problem with the cooling fans. I'll switch them on and you can hear the noise they make. Yeah, they are just too loud. I'm going to have to find some quieter replacements for them. Otherwise, they'll drive me crazy with that noise. To keep my work coil and all the copper tubing cool, I've got a 20 litre water tank. It's sitting on other 20 litre drums. Like so. And we'll trace the hose over here. There it goes to the work coil, flows through there, and then it comes out the drain, out the bottom to another bucket on the bottom. We're ready for our test firing. Here is a crucible I've made out of exhaust pipe, and we'll heat that up, and we'll see what happens. This is the first experiment with induction furnace to see if it works.
Here's the peak down the crucible. Oh, with a nice little glow there. And there it is, it's glowing there as well. And there's the time. Now that I know that the furnace works, it heated up the steel crucible, I'm going to melt pewter. So we've got a pile here, and we'll just slip it in. And we'll leave a piece up top. So when that starts ascending, I'll know it's starting to melt. Wow, that was quick. Really quick. Can't believe how quick that went. Just over five minutes. I've let the pewter ingots cool down. Can handle them now. And what I'll do, chop them off to various lengths to make my bronze. But boy, that was quick. So now I'm going to have to try a high zinc content alloy, which is twice the melting point of pewter. And we'll see how that goes. Well that didn't take too long, 17 minutes. Here are the results from the zinc melt. It took a little bit longer, 
but it still melted it. Now when I started making this video I didn't give it much chance of working but now this video has turned out to be a proof of concept video. I mean it actually worked. So if you want to copy this idea I got my microwave from e -Waste Ben. He is another YouTuber and I'll put a link down in the description and you can click onto his channel. He has got a lot of these microwave ovens in his backyard and he scraps them for the electronics. One last thing before I go while I was attending the North American Model Engineering Show in Detroit I saw this book and it's quite an interesting book it gives you a lot of information about induction heating and induction furnaces and to get information about this subject is very thin on the ground so it can be a very useful book for you so what I'll do, I'll put down in the description again the title, the author and the publisher so if you want to buy your own copy